Hello, it's Deborah from The Attic and I'm showing you a range of books and journals that I've made over the years. Some of these are 12 years old and I'm showing you these because I want to talk about some discoveries that I've made recently into bullet journaling. So although I've always made these sorts of books, I have made them for specific things. So maybe for a season, for a particular holiday, maybe for a road trip. Some of these even relate to one afternoon when we took a winter's walk. What I've never done is keep a diary. I've never kept a daily diary or even a regular journal because I prefer to dip in and out of things. And it depends how busy I am, but it's just not a practice I've ever followed. So recently, a few things conspired to lead me into one direction, which was into bullet journaling. And that's what I thought I would share with you. Originally, I thought, well, I'll just wait until I've been through the process and then I'll share maybe in six, seven months time uh, what I've been doing. But I thought if you were new to bullet journaling as well, it might be good for you to see what had happened to me to get me to where I am now and how it develops. I began by making a journal which will contain all of my smaller booklets and I'll provide a link to the video where I showed you how to make this A5 sized journal cover. If you prefer smaller covers, Traveller's Notebook sized, I'll provide a link for those as well. So this is my actual journal book and then I have some smaller books on the inside. I also have a plastic wallet that contains uh, some extra little bits and bobs and I have a Rodia notebook and this is a dot notebook. I also have some pockets for stickers. The dot notebooks have been a real revelation to me. I didn't know these existed, but they're fabulous for helping you line things up and not having to worry about measuring and using rulers, because if you've seen my videos before, you know I'm not really terribly keen on the numbers thing. I've also found the dot notebooks really helpful for hand lettering, but more of that another time. I'm going to begin by telling you the journal journey that I've been on recently. I'm sure I'm not the only person who is really organised at work. Very little stress, loads of spreadsheets, everything's nailed down, I know exactly what's going on, things that need to be done are diarised and I'm in control of the whole thing. At home, it's a different story. I can't live my domestic life by spreadsheet and there's always so much going on, I don't have a way to log it. As a result, I'm always quite stressed, but it's always on the domestic front rather than on the work front. So I wanted to feel more in control at home and I didn't want to be stressed anymore. I just had too much in my head and my brain was running out of storage space. So the problem is I hate to do lists. I really don't like them at all. And I didn't want to use any apps. I'm a paper girl. I didn't want to be sitting on a computer any more than I needed to because I do that at eight hours a day for my work anyway. So I wanted something different. I needed a single source brain dump. And I tried going back to my old file of facts, 30 years old, didn't quite work for me. So I need something else that would capture ideas and plans and important dates in a way that my file of facts just wasn't allowing me to do. At around about the same time as all of this was happening, Craftstash, who are a really nice website, they've got a fabulous range of products. They got in touch with me and they brought to my attention a new journaling range by Helen Colebrook. She makes wonderful YouTube videos. Do go and check her out. And because I enjoyed watching what she did and was amazed at just how organised she appeared to be, I thought I want to know more about this. So then I read Ryder Carroll's book and Ryder Carroll is the guy who is the author of a book called The bullet journal method. I tried a practice layout having read the book but I put far too much on the page and I also got fixated on the artwork and I think that's as a result of seeing so many beautiful layouts available on Instagram and Pinterest but actually I got a bit sucked into it. So I tried again and this time I focused on what I actually wanted from my bullet journal and I experimented again with layouts but based on much simpler box style layouts and I found that I could add to the artwork without any pressure by making stickers and using washi tape. And all of those things pulled together the journal that I'm going to work on and share with you. And if you have similar concerns and feeling stressed about certain areas of life, maybe this is something that would help you. There are lots of people out there doing this. I'm not the first. I won't be the last. I'm not the best. But I thought we could do this together and maybe it would be more fun.
This is where I started with my Rodia dot notebooks. I started going back to my hand lettering. I used to do calligraphy years and years and years ago, and I really enjoyed it, but I just found it very time consuming. And here are different layouts that I was trying. And I tried some different banner headlines and all that sort of thing to see what I could do to make my own journal pretty. And this is where I got a bit bogged down in the detail of, of the artwork coming before the subject matter. Eventually, after quite a lot of trial and error, I found some writing styles that I liked that felt natural to me, and one that I remember from uh, many years ago living in Scotland, Charles Rennie Macintosh font, which is beautiful. And then I tried some drawings, and I even made a Santa skiing. I don't know why, maybe Christmas was in my head. And this is the actual journal that I use. They say you should never pull pages out of a journal. I say it's your book, your rules, you do what you like with it. And I wanted to experiment and practice with layouts before I actually committed to anything in my book. So here's some of my practicing. This is August. And I think you can see how I was getting bogged down in the artwork and trying to make the journal look pretty rather than focus on what I wanted to get out of the journal. I was having a very lovely time playing with some stamps that I have in my stash and using different ink techniques and deciding how I would lay out each month. And as a demonstration of how far I was drifting from the purpose of my journal, let me show you the artwork I prepared for September. And all I'm doing here is actually adding to my stress because I'm giving myself even more to do every month. And the bullet journal was at risk of becoming a burden rather than a solution. All of this was making me even more stressed. So I went back to basics. I went back to Ryder Carroll's book and I got it back to really simple concepts. I got my contents list in place and my future log as well. All I've done on this layout is written the word September. I've divided up my page with the numbers down the side representing the dates. I have my meal planner and this corresponds to the dates for September. So I don't have to keep repeatedly writing out those dates. I just follow the line across and I fill it all in. And the same with my habit tracker, which I've kept nice and simple. Admittedly, because I've done it this way, I have to write backwards. So far, I haven't found that a problem. And actually, what I could do is use it use the headings vertically and just write down the side as you normally would. The artwork I've kept really, really simple. These are stickers and I'm going to show you in a future video how I've made the little stickers. I've used really simple columns and boxes. I've added a little bit of washi tape at the bottom of the boxes. That's all this needs at the moment because the more important element is that I get myself into the routine of using the journal and I get comfortable with making this part of my daily routine. I've begun adding other things to my book, such as natural cleaning remedies and recipes and some coloured pens that I have. And this is the layout we're going to do together for October. I'm going to be sharing that video with you on September the 20th. So in a week's time, I hope you can join me then. In the meantime, take care.